For investors, timberland has become the symbol of safety. Global tropical timber demand continues to surge as the world's population increases. The need for managed, sustainable timber production forests has never been greater. When stock markets crash, trees keep growing. Direct ownership of fully managed tropical timberland acreage is now available to accredited investors. Prime, valuable hardwood groves close to the beautiful Costa Rican border generate and maintain superior long-term wealth. Consider visiting our forest plantations. Qualified accredited investors should go to PreciousTimberProfits.com or dial 855-888-6288 for more information. Call 855-888-6288 or visit PreciousTimberProfits.com. This announcement does not constitute either an offer to sell securities or a solicitation of an offer to purchase. Offering made by prospectus only. 855-888-6288, PreciousTimberProfits.com. PreciousTimberProfits.com All right, we are back, and uh, we're going to find this uh, fascinating. We, um, on occasion, have one Alex Wilson. He is the chief executive officer of Precious timber.com if you if those who haven't heard this saying what's this yeah it's 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 a an unusual investment vehicle but one that's offering tremendous opportunities for a lot of people located in Nicaragua uh, I'm going to give you the website again here it's precious timber.com and I want to open up by saying Alex is uh, not an investment advisor and he's not giving any investment advice it is not a specific offering an offer to sell securities or an invitation for office for, uh, to purchase securities. Securities may only be sold by exemption or registration. Very important. Uh, Alex, uh, nice to have you on again. Thank you. It's always a pleasure, Stu. Thank you very, very much. All right. We have, I'm happy to say we have new listeners every time out, so I'm going to kind of put you through that, um, uh, that uh, opening uh, discussion about benefit, what you do, uh, how it's different than others, and why this is such a great investment. Yeah, we are in the uh, agricultural space, particularly down, uh, Stu, in the Central American and uh, South American marketplace, where uh, things uh, get uh, the beautiful uh, added advantage of the tropical weather all the time. So fruits and vegetables and hardwoods grow uh, tremendously well down there. The space is a uh, little unusual, little unknown by, I would say, what you would call the average investor. I think uh, most likely uh, the space is uh, attractive to the higher net worth, the accredited, the qualified investor, uh, simply because it's uh, a space that does a few things for the portfolio. It stabilizes the portfolio a lot when, you know, general markets and economies and uh, uh, zigging and zagging like we see with uh, traditional real estate or the stock market for example agriculture uh, simply moves along steadily doesn't matter trees and and plants and fruits and vegetables uh, they're not listening to the stock market they're not listening to uh, the cycles of the economy biologically they're doing their things uh, in, in and on a farm and so that adds a little stability to a portfolio for example uh, you know if you're in coconuts, which is one of the uh, commodities that we grow. Uh, that's an income-producing asset for an investor. The coconut tree produces nothing other than coconuts. It does it whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, obviously, it's a, it's a space that needs a little bit of an education for someone because uh, most likely uh, it hasn't been on their radar screen. But there's lots of places to go for that uh, uh, for that education, of course, you can talk to your financial planner, uh, you can just pop online, or you can talk to a company like us, uh, Precious Timber. Uh, how long for a coconut tree to fully develop? Uh, yeah, they start making coconuts in their fourth year, but they're fully mature by year six, and so production is pretty high, anywhere between 150, 200 coconuts on a, on a uh, annualized basis. And the nice part about it, once they become mature, uh, they keep on, you know, producing for 60 years, so that's why I call it uh, 
an agricultural annuity, when you think about it, you uh, you can own it through a uh, an IRA. You can own it as a simple piece of real estate. You can own it maybe inside one of the funds that we have generated. But it's a it's a long term income producing asset, and of course the commodity itself has become most popular uh, recently in the health food arena. But of course it's got hundreds and hundreds of you know, non-correlated industries that also use the coconut as part of their uh, manufacturing process. Why Nicaragua? Are there other countries that can produce what you are producing? Why Nicaragua? Yeah, well, the reason we chose Nicaragua in particular uh, 17 years ago is because the country's come a tremendously long way from their revolution days in the 70s and 80s. It's now a democratic uh, republic, and... Um, uh, and they have a great rule of law. Uh, for obviously, the, the cost of the soils are very, very affordable in comparison with, say, Brazil or or Ecuador, which is another place we operate in. Um, but also, uh, you know, our, our company's focused on three things, people, planet, and profit, and we make the most impact, social now, I'm talking social, social impact on people's lives, we can make the most impact in Nicaragua because there the wages are still very, very low. Uh, the conditions are improving greatly. And so when you have an altruistic sort of uh, business mind as well, it's called impact investing. I think uh, some people will be familiar with the term of impact investing. Basically means you're making an impact on the environment, you're making an impact on individuals, on people, whilst you're also focused on making money. Uh I would think the climate might be the main reason why there is no competition from other countries. I mean, if you don't have those rains all the time, you don't have a business. Yeah, I mean, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, uh, those are the three countries also in Central America that have got good, you know, bipartisan support in Washington. Those three countries have uh, dramatically cleaned up their acts over the course of the last, uh, well, Panama, of course, 100 years ago. Costa Rica maybe 35 years ago, Nicaragua uh, almost 30 years ago now. So no, no real, you know, heavy gangs or corruption to, to, to deal with. Um, yes, the climate is excellent. Yes, the soils are fabulous. Uh, and so when you've got those ingredients for, um, you know, as a businessman, I mean, take, uh, you know, Cargill. Cargill is the world's largest privately held company. They do all kinds of agricultural applications. And uh, they're heavily uh, invested and have great sort of uh, uh, businesses uh, for, for many, many generations down in, in, in those three countries in particular. You look at uh, the derivation of profits, which is part of what you address to those investors, and we'll have you in the second part of the question talking about the investment demographic that you're looking for, because it's not a conventional investment. But where are the biggest profits derived from the coconuts, the beans, or the timber? Oh, that's a really good question. Our uh, profits are not generated like um, you would normally see in your portfolio, which is based on the fact that you paid one price for something. Say you bought a shares of a public company and you're hoping that the price of the stock goes up and of course that's why you own it and uh, you know maybe get some dividends along the way or you've got gold or silver or you bought a piece of real estate most profits in a portfolio come from you know the fact that the economy is good the trading is good uh, the price point went up here in agriculture we get paid differently we have a little added advent uh, advantage in my opinion we have biology mother nature uh, you know, you poke a, a small sapling into the ground, like a, say a, an African mahogany tree. It starts off as a little baby sapling, but when you harvest it, it's many, many tens of thousands of times greater in volume. So consequently, the value, the ROI, the return that you get on your investment, as much as 60% of that profit comes from biology. And so, so long as you keep the stuff alive, and of course farming is like anything, it has some risks attached to it, so you have to control the risks through best practices. But overall, if, uh, if an investor was to take a look at uh, agriculture, they would see that it's one of the most uh, you know, favorite uh, investment asset classes and asset spaces of high net worth individuals and institutions, family offices, and endowments. Joining us, Alex Wilson. Uh, the company Precious 
timber, it's preciousTimber.com, uh, with growth in uh, Nicaragua. Um, <clears throat> Alex, what about the type of investor? I mentioned it's it's not your typical in, in, uh, in investment guy or woman. No, no. Um, we work strictly and only with accredited investors. Accredited is a term that the SEC coined uh, for people that have um, a higher net worth, generally a million dollars of investable assets separate of their residence, or they have an annual income of $200,000 for the past two or three years and expect that to continue on. We work with family offices, we work with institutions. Um, it's a space that, uh, as I say, probably for the smaller investor that needs liquidity, um, it's not a good spot, so I would not recommend it for that. And I'm, as you said earlier, I'm not an investment advisor. I am a farmer, uh, but we do work with investors. We we manage other people's money that uh, enjoy being in in this space. But for those that have also, you know, uh, a long term sort of capital appreciation goal or a long term wealth preservation goal, where you could pass it on to family members. In addition to the income that comes off of these trees on an annualized basis, coffee trees, cocoa uh, beans, cocoa nuts, you get an annual income from them, so it's an annual uh, production of cash. In our fund, we have we have a triple blended fund that includes coffee, coconuts, and timber. Uh, the dividends start in year two and go on for 20 years, but um, mostly capital appreciation and capital preservation is probably the investor that fits best. I want to get into some of the investment questions, but uh, let's segue here into a trip. I know you just had quite a remarkable trip uh, to three countries. I'd like you to chat about it when people tell them what it was about and um, uh, clarify. Yeah, well, we offer a free uh, discovery tour for anyone that's interested in learning about this because I think the first step is an education. We're not a company that's about to say, hey, this is something you should do uh send in, you know, a check and we'll, uh, we'll put you in on the plan. No, it doesn't work that way. We like to know what a client's trying to accomplish financially. We like to know when they're trying to accomplish so that we can personally tailor build something around their particular goals. So education is where it starts. And so what we've just de what we decided many years ago was to uh, add a, a free uh, discovery tour. All you have to do is get on the plane and come on down and uh, pay for your flight and, and cover your accommodations. We cover everything else. Uh, but it uh, gives you an opportunity to go into the plantations, gives you the opportunity to talk to the management team that's in, in, in the field, the uh, qualified and experienced uh, engineers, also gets to talk about the legal side of things, all of the way we track and keep the data on the farm. Farming is a business. It's not, uh, you know, it's not something that you play at. This is a real business. It's critical that you have uh, you know, all of the metrics in place. But what that does, these trips really, really help uh, someone that's uh, intrigued, someone that has a, an interest, get down to the nitty gritty, get the questions answered that they want, see how their money's being managed and see what uh, types of returns that they can achieve that are generally, you know, more attractive than, say, the average return that we might get in the stock market or traditional investments. What should people watch out for? I mean, you know, obviously, you have to be very diligent when you're investing in, in anything. But what are a few things you have to watch out for when evaluating a direct timber investment? Yeah, I would say start by who it is that you're doing business with because there's, um, there's been some promoters recently that I've seen um, join the space. And if you don't have any skin in the game, I don't know how you can manage any anybody else's money. So first of all, long-term experience, I think, is a good thing. Uh, track record, stuff like that, maybe even talk to if they have, uh, you know, clients uh, like we do. We have many, many, many clients, so we're, we're open and our clients become family members even to a certain point where they go down on an annualized basis to look at stuff. Then cover the risks. There's risks in everything. Go over the risks. Um, you know, you can't, uh, you, you, you can't avoid risks, uh, but you can certainly manage them. And then finally, I would say the last thing um, is to make sure that you've allocated the right percentage of the portfolio. That's probably something that if you're working on your own portfolio, you've, you've figured out to do, or you use your, you know, your own financial uh, professional to help you with that. So those are the 
things that come right off the top of my head that someone I think should absolutely do uh, when they're looking at this kind of uh, an investment asset uh, alternative. What about um, in initial investment? You mentioned, I think, a $200,000 income for two or three years prior, a million dollars in cash available. How, what do you usually do to recommend the investment amount for the to, to get in? Well, I don't really recommend a, an amount. We do have a minimum position uh, that is a, is a hundred thousand, um, but um, really, it all you know everything dictates on what someone's trying to do, what they're trying to accomplish, how they want to structure it. Is it for their income? Are they trying to personally create an income for retirement? Are they trying to um, pass on their wealth? Are they trying to just simply make sure that during the course of the next crash? Who knows when that will be? Will we have another one? I think it always does go up and down, so it's kind of silly to think that we won't, but we certainly uh, should should be, uh, you know, putting something of a, in our portfolio that's going to stabilize the portfolio. Um, so, you know, there's so many variables that it's tough to say where's a good place to start financially. Um, I would say, you know, start with something small and get to know the company that you're working with. And as you get a good, uh, you know, track record, then, you know, you step it up if it, if it fits properly. You're not talking about amounts, but can you give a little insight on how the diversification of investment should be? Coconut, timber. Uh, let, let's do that as soon as we get back. Got all caught up with timber here. This is Stu Taylor, Equity Strategies, rejoining us. Alex Wilson right after a break. Sue Taylor back and <clears throat> just a comment that coming up in the next two or three weeks will be Tom Coburn, former United, former United States. Senator, one, one of my few favorites, I could count him on one hand. He'll be joining us with his new book, and also Patrick Buchanan uh, will be back on this show. He's been a regular, but we haven't had him on for a while, so stay tuned. I'll announce it uh, probably next week. Uh, back with uh, Alex Wilson. <clears throat> the company is Precious Timber, uh, and... Um, you know, we, we, there's a lot of confusion about what you can do with the, uh, your IRA. How, how do you? How does one access the funds in his or her IRA to own timber? Well, that's done through what's called a self-directed IRA. Uh, a, they have self-directed 401ks too. So, first thing you would do is. Um, You'd find a custodian that you like, and there's many, many of them. You can just go online and poke in um, self-directed IRA companies. Uh, so the big box companies, as, uh, as li much as they like to uh, give you some options, but it's only a you know a basket of options that they approve. Whereas if you have your IRA self-directed, so long as you're picking things that are IRS approved uh, inside an IRA, for example, you want to buy a piece of property that you can rent out in the Bahamas, for example, or you know Cancun or wherever it may be, you want a piece of property that's a rental property, you can buy that and have your IRA own it, have the income come back into your IRA. And likewise with agriculture, you can buy a, uh, a, you know, a teak farm or you can buy a coconut uh, farm or you can buy a uh, coffee uh, producing farm. You can buy shares into a fund such as uh, our agricultural fund, our multi-blended uh, agricultural fund. So it starts with getting a custodian, and uh, a self-directed IRA custodian to work with, and then following uh, their uh, instructions as to what you can and cannot do. But basically what it does is allow you to direct your own money into the spaces and into the investment vehicles that you want. Alex, uh, how do you, um, wh wh when is the best time to harvest the trees, and what happens next? Is it, yeah, is, it we, is it possible to sell the trees before harvest time and cash out? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, so let's talk timber for a second here. Now, the way we work with our clients, there's two ways. You can fee simply own the dirt inside of the uh, managed uh, reforestation um, platform that we work under. We're not, uh, you know, we're, we're full on lumber producers and we work in various
various countries that uh, have best practices, have great soils, have all of the right conditions biologically, you know, certainly environmentally with the, with the weather patterns. And so, um, you know, obviously there's plenty of plenty of options for you in timber to, to harvest, but there's what's called an optimal harvest uh, size, and that varies on the species. Some of them might take 10 years, some of them might make 12 or 15 or 18 or 20. But uh, lumber is made into all different sizes from different size trees. So if you did it that way, where you owned your own dirt, of course, not only do you get the return on investment from the lumber that's produced, but you get the appreciation value going up as you the, the longer you hold the property. That's what most um, you know, most families in the U.S. that own a lot of timber, they keep the dirt, they own the dirt, they don't go out and, for, and farm the, the, the forest themselves. Uh, so you can cut whenever you want, but of course, the older the tree, the more volume of lumber that's in the tree. Timber's uh, sold by the board foot across the world. The more board feet of lumber that's inside a log, the larger the log, the more valuable it is. Got about a minute or two left. Let me have you wrap it up with something we haven't covered. Yeah, um, I think the, the way to wrap this session up, Stu, is to, if someone's interested in learning about agriculture, it is an alternative investment. Bob Rice wrote a fantastic book called The Alternative Answer. I actually like the subtitle. It says uh, the non-traditional investments that have driven the world's best performing portfolios. And, I, and the reason I think it's a good place to wrap up is because the average investor kind of uses just this 60-40 model. They've got a lot of stocks, a lot of bonds, a lot of real estate, maybe some uh, precious metals, but they don't have any agricultural assets. They never have. They've never thought about it. And when you start doing a, a little bit of a homework on this space, you're going to find not only is it very well performing, not only is it a very safe place, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a low-risk, high-return space, but it can do many things for you. It can grow the portfolio nicely. It can protect the portfolio nicely. It can produce a lot of income. So I'd say education, and you get that through Precious Timber, uh, our website, it. PreciousTimber.com. PreciousTimber.com. It's, it's been great having you on. Look forward to having you back soon. I want to thank everyone for listening. See you next week.